This video tutorial will explain how to embed listing reports on custom forms to show information from related items set in relational fields. In this example, I have a simple workflow here where my children items will be spawned off a subtask transition that will post into the same primary table and into the same workflow. Uh, first thing you'll want to go ahead and do is check the configuration of your subtask transition and go into the post options in the property editor. Uh, we can see I've pre-configured everything uh, with the exception of these two drop downs here which will need to be populated once we've established the uh, or created the relational fields that will contain the related item or items. So we're going to go ahead and do that now in the uh, data design table, uh, data design area here under the primary table. Um, what I'm going to do is establish a one-to-many relationship um, so my parent items can have uh, multiple children. However, um, each child object can only have one parent. So for the first one, uh, we're going to do a multi-relational, and this is going to be children, uh, showing all my children items. Let's name it children. And we'll need to go ahead and configure the options to target the right table, which will be the primary table and we'll create one for the reverse, <clears throat> the uh, children showing the parent. I'll just name parent. And that's going to also be targeting the primary table. So once those are established, <clears throat> we can go ahead and go back into the workflow and go into the property editor of our subtask transition. And under the post options, we need to fill in these drop down accordingly. So um, for the first one, set original item, which will be the parent in new items field, the child, will need to select the single relational parent field, and for the reverse, the children field. Now that we've uh, configured that, uh, we can go ahead and create our, uh, first we need to deploy this, and then we'll need to create our report that we will eventually embed onto the form. All right, uh, I should mention there are two ways you can go ahead and generate your report, um, either in Composer, as a Composer-defined report, or in Runtime. Most of you will probably want to do a Runtime configured report that you configure in the Workspace or Work Center. That way, if you want to make any modifications to it later, you can do so um, easily in Runtime without having to go into Composer, make a change, and do another deployment. Um, just for demonstrative purposes, I'll go ahead and quickly demonstrate how to do one in Composer. You just need to go into the Report Definitions area here and uh, go ahead and right-click in this area and hit Add New Listing. And um, this by default will target a, the primary table of this application if by chance you are spawning uh, your related items into a aux table, you'll need to go into the data design view, right click your aux table, and hit create report definition for this table. Because otherwise it'll just create one for the primary table here. Okay, we can go into here, and you can drag any columns you want to have uh, displayed when you're looking at the parent item and the report is showing you all the related children. These are the columns that they will uh, show for that related child item. Uh, for now, I'll just go ahead and keep these defaults here. And the filter, which is the key part to make this work, uh, needs to be ran on the parent relational field. So it's essentially going to be a report that says, show me all the children where within those children the parent relational field is pointing back to the current parent I'm looking at. And um, by default, it's going to be query at runtime. So this will need to be filled in dynamically based upon the parent item that you're viewing at that time. Now, uh, to do that, you'll need to go into the visual design area, open up whatever state or transition form you wish to embed this report widget onto. I have the state form here and uh, the embedded report widgets on the right. I'm going to go ahead and drag it into the uh, desired area. And then from once we uh, do that, we can click on it and go into the property editor. And then on the general tab, go to the configure button right here. And we want to go ahead and use the Composer Defined Report. 
All right, and we can hit OK. Now to fill in that filter dynamically, since it's query at runtime, we need to go into the Query tab of this uh, report widget. And it's going to try to, uh, this is by default with that checkbox I checked in that uh, prior window. But um, when it comes to relational fields, you want to try to use uh, the TSID because uh, trying to fill in values based upon display format of that relational field can be tricky or based upon the uh, table, the, uh, the uh, display value of the table that the relational field is pointing to. So TSID is more precise. Um, it's uh, the ID that uh, uh, relates the entire item that is being referenced in the relational field. So let's take this out, and what we're going to do is we use this special vari dynamic variable here called record ID. So this will fill in the TSID of the current item you're viewing, and that will go ahead and accomplish what we're trying to do here. So that should be everything for um, showing the um, showing re having a report show related children item. Now, since uh, we're going to be um, showing both uh, related children and related uh, parent items based upon what item you're viewing. So if you're looking at the child object, you want to have a report that shows a parent and vice versa. We're going to actually have two reports on here since we're also posting to the same table and same workflow. Um, and you'll just need to generate a report with the um, same steps as mentioned before, with the only difference being that you're going to have the filter report on the um, children multi-relational field, not the uh, parent one. Um, so that covers that for a composer-defined report, and now we're going to go ahead and uh, show you how to do it if it's defined in runtime. Okay, here in runtime, let's go ahead and create a listing report. And we're just going to go ahead and leave these two defaults. Reporting on the base project's fine. And um, these are the two default columns, which is fine. For the search filter, we're going to go ahead and filter on the parent relational field. And we're going to do it as query at runtime. And once we're done with that, we can save that and title it whatever you'd like. Excuse me, this is going to be for showing related children. And you need to make sure to put it in a privileged category um, of guest or one that users will be able to see when they view this particular state or transition form with this embedded report. And once you select that, you'll see that the reference name field becomes uh, available. And you can go ahead and put in a reference name, which is required when you're going to be using a reference link to dump into Composer. And I'm just going to go ahead and give it the same name as the report title. And hit Finish. And on the uh, Finish screen here, you need to go ahead and click on this reference link, which will generate a reference URL to this report, which you'll need to copy. And once you do that, you can go back into Composer, select your embedded report widget, go into the property editor, and click the configure button on the right here. And now we're using a uh, workspace defined report, uh, runtime defined report, so we'll click that radio button, and in this field here, paste in that link. And you hit OK. And go back into the query tab, and again, we'll want to use the record ID dynamic variable. And that solves that for um, creating, again, a report that will show related children. Um, as I said before, we'll also have another report to be able to show the parent information if you're looking at a child item. And again, that'll just be the reverse. Um, so the report filter will be on the multi-relational uh, children field. And I won't do that um, since um, it's the same steps, just that one change. And one other report I wanted to mention you can create is one to show sibling items. Uh, I've gone ahead and created that here as a third report. And uh, this requires a, a couple different filters. Uh, one that shows, um, does, does a filter on the 
relational field containing the parent and that'll be filled in dynamically with the uh, field on the item that actually does contain the parent. So it's basically saying um, show me all items that are pointing to the same parent that I am. Um, that would of course include the one that you're currently viewing so you would logically want to exclude that so you would add another filter that says um, would do not show me item IDs that contain the current item and you fill that in here with uh, the current item ID so it'll exclude the current item and I'll go ahead and show you how this works in runtime all right so let's go ahead and create our first item which will be the parent item I'll simply title it parent All right, and as you can see, the reports aren't loading anything right now. We'll go ahead and create our first uh, child item. And it's mapping the fields by default. One thing you need to be careful of, if you are actually posting into the same table, um, that will automatically map fields, including um, your relational fields. So um, to avoid uh, problems in reporting, I would do a override on the submit transition to clear the, um, the in this case, the multi-relational field containing all the children item. Um, I won't get into details on that, but um, again, if you are posting to the same table, you'll want to clear it because it'll try to copy in the um, information from the parent item into the ch uh, child, even though you want to have everything um, blanked out. Uh, so just uh, be aware of that. So here's child one. All right, uh, so right now we're looking at the first child. You can see right here that the uh, related parent report is correctly showing my parent item. Uh, let's go into the parent. And you can see here it is showing that child. Let's go ahead and create another child item here. Child two. All right, and we're looking at um, the second child, and you can see it's still pointing to the uh, correct parent. And now you can see my related siblings report um, showing the right item. And if you go back into the parent again, or excuse me, that was the child. Uh, let's go back into the parent. And now you can see it is showing uh, both of my um, related children um, when I look at this parent. So I hope you found this tutorial informative and useful. This trick is definitely a neat and organized way of showing related items and can be a better alternative to using subrelationals, especially when you have a setup where you can have more than one related item since subrelationals can only work with single relational fields. Now, if you wish to show a listing report of multiple items and have the same report also show information on related items, you will want to look into creating listing reports with join conditions, which I will demonstrate in my other video tutorial titled Using Joins and Reporting to Show Related Item Fields. Now, for your convenience, uh, I've created a simple PowerPoint slide that um, will show you the different um, conditions to use based upon what you want the report to show. So you can go ahead and pause this video and take a look at this uh, when you're generating your reports and needing to put in the correct filters. So um, hope you found that useful and this concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.